Alrighty, welcome back to part two of this section. Uh, we're picking back up where we took a break just because of time constraints. Uh, we're picking back up on this section right in here in, and frankly, rest of the midsection. Uh, we were working on the wheel and <laughs> actually I realized that in the middle of doing everything that I had a major oversight and that was that this wheel actually needs to flip down but I have my adjustment pin right here. Well, <laughs> frankly, right now it can only flip up, which doesn't actually work. And I also kind of noticed that, you know, this piece right here really looks pretty wimpy. You know, it's really, it doesn't give you that sense of, oh, wow, that wheel could actually, you know, support the weight of this. So I've come up with a solution, and that is to actually delete this piece that we added and even though you know I hate to redo work I think that in this case it will actually be for the best and what we're gonna do is by adding in all the extra detail back behind here and extra structural supports and things like that we're basically going to give it the impression that this piston is strictly on the outside and that the other side has all the pieces attached to it and in fact if we look at our concept over here on the other layer, you can in fact see that that's basically how this one is done as well. We can see that most of the detail work appears to be over here. And so we're gonna do that same thing here. So let's first just select it. We're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode. And then using L while hovering over the pieces, let's just select this one and then this one and we'll hit X and delete vertices. There we go, that looks good. So that way we can just leave that as is. And so all of the detail behind here will help us give the impression that this is a very sturdy wheel and whatnot. And I'm also going to go ahead and add in a spring to this. As you know, we can see on our concept here that that ha appears to have that. And well, actually, let's think about this for a second. If these are actually pistons, then I suppose that we shouldn't have springs on them and instead should have springs on another part uh, so actually, we're just going to not worry about that for the time being. Maybe, you know, this whole piece is perhaps a uh, a shock absorber, but we won't worry about that for the time being. What I want to go ahead and do is put in some more of these structural details. And if we take a look at our concept, we can see that there's a couple of main ones in particular that pop out. And that is this piece right in here, this piece right through here, this kind of dark gray, and then this piece right over here. So I want to go ahead and put all those in. And looking at this, we can actually see that this piece appears to be basically attached to this. This one is just back behind the wheel. This one could almost be a large circular drum of sorts, although maybe it's squarish, but it looks a bit circular. And then this one in here uh, looks to be basically coming down from the main engine frame to then attach right in here. So let's go ahead and put those in. And this first one, we actually already have the piece. You'll notice that it's already attached there. So let's go ahead and start with that. So we'll hit tab to go into edit mode. And let's just start by separating this piece out. So I'll select it, hit P, separate by selection. And then I can select it. I'm gonna hit shift space to unmaximize my view. I'll go over to the modifiers, go ahead and add in a subsurf modifier to it, increase the resolution to and optimal display as with the rest of the things. I'll hit shift space to maximize my view again. I'll go ahead and hit T to bring up my toolbar and just click smooth shading. And then I can hit T again to go ahead and close that. Now I want to uh, go ahead and attach this completely to here. Uh, so I'm going to just take this edge right over here and I'm just going to actually deselect that one. And I'm just going to take this in like that. And then maybe I can smooth some of these around a little bit somewhere in there. And I'll go ahead and add in another edge loop across here with control R and then just slide it right up to that edge. Okay, that looks good. Let's also go ahead and add in a loop across here to sharpen that up. And we'll do one on this edge as well so that that gets nice and sharp and immediately that starts to look a lot better. Um, let's see, I wanna go ahead and kind of figure out some of the detailing in here. So switching over, I'm actually gonna hit shift space or not shift space, I'm gonna hit in and go down to my background images and, and here on the side view, I'm gonna go ahead and take, <clears throat> excuse me, take the opacity up to say 0.7, just so I can see my detail in, in the background a little better. And now looking at this, I can see that we've got this kind of triangular piece right in here. So let's go ahead and create that. I'll do that just by say selecting this face right here. I'll hit shift D, right click, 
Then let's hit S, X, scale it in just a bit, move it in across the X axis by hitting G and X, and then I'll hit three to go back to my side view. Let's go ahead and move it over along the Y axis a little bit. Maybe we'll hit R, rotate this around, and then let's go ahead and hit E to extrude, take this out like that, and then we'll left click. Then let's go ahead and deselect everything, and then let's just select this top one. I can just control left click and drag around it, and then I'll slide this right up to there, and I'll take this one right up to there. Now I can go ahead and sharpen this up. So I'm first going to select this back face and this top one, and I'll just hit X and delete those faces. And then let's go ahead and delete this back face as well. So I'll just select these vertices, this one here and that one there. Just hit X, delete the vertices. And I'll take this edge by alt right clicking on it. I'm going to take it in along the X axis by hitting G and then X. And that looks pretty good. I'll also go ahead and select this one here. Maybe take it back a little more along the Y axis. And then I want to go ahead and sharpen up this corner. So I'll just add in another edge loop. And such that my angle is perfectly parallel here to this edge, I'm going to slide it all the way over. And actually, since I did that, I actually need to go ahead and disable the auto merge editing. So I'll first go to mesh, auto merge editing. Then I can add in that loop, then I'll slide it all the way over, and then I'll hit G and Y to take it back just a little bit. This way, these edges are perfectly parallel to give me a nice clean mesh. I can go ahead and re-enable my auto merge now. And I want to go ahead, if I can get to the right view by hitting three, I want to go ahead and add in another loop right down here, just about like that, so that we've got a nice sharp corner there, as you can see on the reference. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and add in some small details around here. So it looks like we've got maybe some nuts and bolts in here. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to select this piece. I'm going to hit, or actually let's join these together. So I'll go ahead and shift right click on this one, make this my primary selection. And then I'll just hit control J to join those. Hit tab to go into edit mode. Then let's select this piece with L, shift D. I'll just move it right over here. Maybe scale it down just a bit. Move in. Take it in along the x-axis until it roughly lines up somewhere right in there. And then I can go ahead and shift D to duplicate this and just take it down a few times. Something like that. Okay, that looks good. And then I also want to add in some uh, kind of straight pieces here. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to select these edges and these vertices. And I'm going to deselect those ones in here because I don't want those. And then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate this down. I'm just going to bring it down to say right about here. And then I will deselect this side. I'm going to move these over. I'll hit Control L to select the entire thing again. I'm going to hit S, Z, and zero to scale to make it perfectly flat. And I'll just hit E to extrude, take it down just a little bit. And I need to go ahead and then select this back face, hit X, delete the faces, maybe take it back in along the Y axis a bit more. And then I'll go ahead and select this inner these inside faces hit x delete faces and i'll go ahead and select that again take it in along the x-axis about to there then i'll hit Control l select the entire thing and then hit g and x take it in until it crosses the border and then i'll go ahead and from the side view duplicate this down a couple more times kind of like this you know matching roughly this angle in through here and you know what, maybe I'll even go ahead and match the rotation in here so I can rotate this around. Maybe I'll rotate this like so. And this one, I can go ahead and take this one in a bit more. And I'll duplicate this again, rotate, and then one last time rotating it to match this angle right there. And that then looks pretty good. So they're just kind of like extra little details that don't necessarily do much, but they do help with a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and select these outside vertices here. And I'm going to add a little bit more shape to these by selecting these. And then I'm going to take them out along the X axis to add in a bit of an angle there, which again, just helps add some extra little detail. You know, maybe these are kind of structural supports right in there. Also go ahead and take these in just a bit to get a little better shape to this arc. And maybe pull that one back a little. There we go. Now that's nice and smooth. Maybe I'll take this in like so. I could go ahead and give a slight arc to that. That starts to look a little better. So 
So it's all about just kind of, you know, getting something that feels fairly natural. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and beef this up a little bit too by just taking it down to about there. And then I'll take that out. Take that out. I'm take that in to right there. Make a sharper edge. There we go. Let's go ahead and rotate this again to match that angle that we just changed. Something like that. We can go and average this one between those so it looks a little better. Maybe also go ahead and move this one in. And again, I'm just selecting those by hovering over and then hitting L. That looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and do some of the other supports. I want to add in this kind of drum here. So let's select this piece. I'm going to hit Tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and just say, let's select these two loops. I'll hit Shift D, rotate or move them over. Then I'll rotate it, bring it down to about there. And then let's go ahead and hit E to extrude, take it out. And the reason that I selected the surface here, you know, these two loops, is so that I get that extrusion along the normal, so I get a perfectly, you know, perpendicular edge there. And now that looks good, but I want to go ahead and scale this up. So let's go ahead and hit uh, S and then Shift Z, or let's see, S. I guess we'll have to, let's see, if we change this to go enable this, change it to local. Okay, and it's not going to pick that up. That's okay. Um, instead, we can do, let me think what it's called. There's a tool in here. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can find it from the face menu or edges, maybe. Oh, it'd be in transform. There we are. Oh, push, push and pull allows us just to kind of expand that. Although actually that's not working very well. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and scale this out normally. And we'll scale out to about right there. And then I want to go ahead and sharpen this up. But let's remove these interior faces. So we'll hit X, delete the faces. And then I can go ahead and select this interior loop as well. Right here, I'll hit X, delete the vertices. And then I'll add in a loop right here to sharpen that up nicely. Maybe I'll select this. I'll extrude that in just a little bit more and then add in another loop right there. So again, I just selected it, hit E to extrude, and then immediately after hitting E, hit S to scale it in to do that real quick. And that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and add in the beam attaching these two, which also looks to be bolted in right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, say, these faces here, but then deselect all these inner vertices like that and then I'm going to go ahead and just hit shift D to duplicate it then I'll hit right click and alt S to scale this up along the normals something about like that so it just kind of expands out maybe I'll scale it in along the x-axis a little bit and then I want to go ahead and I'm going to deselect this these top ones and then I'm going to pull this down to about right there Go ahead and I'm going to delete these vertices here. Also select these two top loops by Alt Shift right clicking on them. Bring them down just a little bit. About like that. Then I'm going to Alt, Alt right click to select this loop. I'm going to hit E to extrude. Bring it down just a bit like that. Maybe I'll go ahead and rotate. Do it a couple times and then rotate around this corner. Okay. That looks good. Let's take this one. We're going to take it up a bit more so I'll extrude out to about here and then we're going to take this surface we're going to hit E to extrude take it right up like that then I'll hit X and delete faces actually you know what we're going to undo that instead we're going to add in an edge loop right here and then another one right there and then we're going to take these edges hit E to extrude take it right up and then hit X and delete faces we can then go ahead and bring this in along the x-axis. Take it in like that. We'll add in, say, two edge loops. Deselect the back side here. And then bring these in across the x-axis so we've got a nice arc on this. We'll take it in a bit more. We can go ahead and take this loop down a little. So we'll just hit G and then uh, actually hit Control e and Edge Slide. Bring it down to about right there. Deselect the back side again. Take it in along the x-axis. 
So we get that. That looks good. And then I want to go ahead and select all of these perimeter edges on this piece. And we're going to hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S. Well, that's not going to work to do Alt S. Instead, we'll just scale it down. Actually, let's first scale it in across the, the X axis. Oh, and since we've got auto merge, let's turn off the auto merge editing, then SX, bring it in like that. And then we can go ahead and deselect all of these ones here. Then we'll bring these ones down, deselect those, and then take these ones in like that. And so that will then give us a nice piece for all of these. We need to go and add in another edge loop right there to sharpen that. And another one right here to sharpen that. Maybe we'll take the whole piece. We'll scale it up just a little bit, or we'll take it up along the Z axis. There we go. Maybe we'll bring this out across the X axis a little bit more. There we go. And that looks pretty good. So we've just got an extra structural piece in there, which let's go ahead and grab, say, this bolt. We'll shift D, bring it over, scale it down, go to about right there, bring it out. Something like that. We can go ahead and delete some of these extra vertices in, or extra loops in here that we don't need because we'll never see them. There we go. And then we'll duplicate this down to right about in there. And you'll notice that right now we're intersecting. So let's take this, hit tab to go into edit mode, select everything except for this interior loop, bring it out along the x-axis just a little bit. And then we can go in here on the wheel, select all of this, bring it out a bit. There we go. That looks good. And I suppose we ought to go ahead and add in basically a washer on this. So let's select this. We'll take the inside loop, shift D, bring, oops, bring it in along the X axis, right to that surface. Then we'll go and hit E to extrude, scale it way up. It's about there. Hit control L to select everything that's attached. Hit E to extrude, bring it out along the X axis, about like that. We can add in a loop right about like that. Select everything, W and Shade Smooth. We'll go ahead and select these loops and pull them out further to about right there. Select everything and Control N. Let's select these loops in here. Actually, let's just select this inside one. Hit X, delete the vertices because you'll never see it. And that looks good. That also helps to beef it up a little bit. Save everything. And now I want to go ahead and let's add in this piece right in here. So I'm going to do this based on here. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode right here. I'm going to select this edge loop, and I'm going to basically deselect uh, everything past right. Or I'm going to deselect all these by hitting B and then middle click and drag. Also deselect these. And then I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, and I'm going to just leave everything where it is. I'm going to hit tab to leave edit mode just because I want this origin point right here. So I'm going to hit Shift S and cursor to selected. Then I'll hit Tab to go into edit mode. Hit period to scale towards the cursor. Then scale this in a little bit. Then I'll hit E to extrude. Immediately hit S and then scale this out about like that. And then I'll left click, deselect these vertices here by hitting uh, B and middle click and drag. Then I'll hit S again, scale it out. I can deselect this vertex, scale these out a bit more, deselect that, scale those out and you select that, and then scale that out to about there, and maybe this out about there, maybe this one a little bit further, and then I get this really nice smooth arc. Now you'll notice that this also went along the, this was origin here, so this went out this way. So what I need to do is deselect these, I'm gonna select all these, hit S, or I'm gonna hit comma to scale towards the individual center, then S, X, and zero, and then I can hit G, X, and snap right to those. So now it's or smooth again. I'll select this whole piece. I'm going to bring it out along the 
the x-axis. And I don't think I made this flat, so let's hit S, X, and 0 again. There we go. And then let's go ahead and hit E to extrude. Take it in along the x-axis by hitting X. Pull it into about there, and then we'll go and hit X and delete faces. Also go ahead and select this interior loop here. Hit X and delete faces again. And then I can add in an edge loop on the inside and outside. I want to go ahead and add in some of these pieces in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another edge loop right down like this. And then another one here. And I'll do another one right there. And then I'll add in another edge loop right across like this. And I'll go ahead and add another one in here. So basically I'm adding a border around each one of these insets. Another one here. And since this has straight edges, this works really well to just add in the extra edge loops. And I'll add in, uh, let's see, I'm also going to add in a cut right here. So I'm going to add a loop on that side. Another one right here. And then I'll leave that as is for now. Then I want to go and hit Control Tab, go into Face Mode, select this face, this face, and this face. And then I'm just going to hit E to extrude, take it in along the x-axis there, along the normal. And then I'll add in another loop right up like that, and another one right up like that. That will strengthen those up. And then just to make these nice and flat, I'll go and hit Control Tab, go to Edge Mode. I'm going to select all of these perimeter edges which you'll have to do in a couple steps since it doesn't form a nice clean edge loop. And lastly on this one. And actually I want to go ahead and select the corners as well. So I'll select that corner, that corner, that one, and that one, what we're going to do is we're going to crease these. There we go. And last one right there. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and hit Shift E to crease this. And we'll just go ahead and do 0.8. That will sharpen those up even more. Uh, let's go ahead and why don't we sharpen up the outsides as well, which these ones we can select a little bit more as loops. We can just go in uh, Alt Shift right click on all the edges. There we go. We'll shift E and 0.8. Now those are look nice and sharp. Select everything W and shade smooth. Control N to fix the black spots. And that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and I'm going to select all of these faces right in here. And we're going to extrude these up, add a little bit more thickness in there. So we'll just hit E to extrude, take it up along the normals to about right there and then do it one more time. And then we'll select these faces that we created, hit X and delete faces. We can also go into here in vertex mode by hitting control tab and then move these in just a little bit so that we don't see a seam right there. That looks pretty good. Okay, I want to cut out this piece right in here. So we're going to go ahead and the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to select these pieces like this. I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, and then hit S and shift X to scale these down excluding the x-axis such that I don't take I don't distort the overall width like this at all and then with these done I can now hit X delete faces then I can go ahead and select these vertices in here hit s and shift X once more bring that in and you'll notice now I've got a pretty much roughly circular shape here I can bring that out a little bit more maybe in a little bit more there we go and I've got an extra face right in there somehow and then what I want to do is I'll just select this edge. I'll hit E to extrude, snap, snap, s snap, snap, and snap. So let's just hit, you just hit E and then hold down control and snap to the next vertex. And those will bring those together. And let's see. Yeah, that looks good. And let's go ahead and add another edge loop across the edge here. Bring that right in to sharpen it up. Looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, we could go ahead and do the same thing right down there. We'll just do this real quick. So add one there, add one there, select these, these, hit E to extrude, right click, S and Shift X, scale it way down, bring it out to line back up, 
select that face that's created, hit X, delete faces, bring these loops back in a little bit to compensate for the thickness, select these, hit X and delete faces, select these, hit S and shift X once again, bring it in to get a nice circular shape there, then we'll select, bring that back, and then we'll hit E to extrude, control, snap, E, control, E, control, E, control, and E, control. Select everything, W, and remove doubles. Looks pretty good. Maybe we'll bring that back in a little bit. There we go. Just kind of smooth them out a bit. We can go ahead and take this edge, bring it about like that. Maybe bring that out there. That in. There we go. Uh, and then I want to go ahead and add in a big washer and a bolt right here. So I'm going to uh, first, let's go ahead and hit control tab, go into face mode, select this, hit shift S and cursor to selected. Then we hit shift A, add in a, uh, a circle. Then I'll hit F6, change the vertex count down to eight, the size to 0.1, and I will go ahead and align it to view. And I'll hit control tab, go back to vertex mode, scale this down to about right there. I'll go ahead and hit shift S, cursor to selected before I forget, because I'm gonna add in a bolt right here on the center. Then I'll go ahead and hit E to extrude, scale this way down about like that. Then we hit control tab, go into edge mode, select both these edges. And then I will go and hit E to extrude, take it in along the X axis about like that. Now I can hit control L and bring it back out along the X axis to make it sit on the surface. The reason that I did that in edge mode is that way I don't have a, a set of faces created on this inner ring. And I can just do that one step. I can also now go ahead and crease these to say 0 0.8, select everything, W and shade smooth. Looks good. Now I want to go and add in this big bolt, which we're going to assume that it's six sided. So I'm going to hit shift A, add in a circle, hit F6, change the size down to six, the radius to say 0.25 or 0.025 and align it to view. Actually, wow, that was pretty much perfect. No, I don't generally get it that close, but now we can just scale this up since it's a washer, uh, about like that. We'll take it in or out along the x-axis just to sit on the surface. Maybe scale it in just a little bit, then hit E to extrude, scale it up, and then E to extrude, take it in along the x-axis like this. Take it in just a little bit out, a little bit more scale it down, and then I want to go ahead and select, say, this edge, and this edge, hit F to fill a face, and then this edge, and this edge, hit F to fill a face, and then I want to go ahead and select all of these perimeter edges, like, actually, you know, what? I want to select the entire thing, except this one surface edge here, and I want to hit Shift E and point, say, 9, and that will crease that right up to make a nice bolt. Let's select everything, W, Shade Smooth. Let's also go ahead and select these two pieces. After hitting sh uh, Shift Space, let's change the material, say over to the light gray, click Assign. There we go. We could go ahead and select these ones as well. Change these over to the light gray. Just so, you know, it helps kind of differentiate between all the different details. That's looking pretty good. Uh, let's see, we've got that big piece in there. I want to go ahead and let's start working on the main body. So I'm going to select this, hit tab to go into edit mode, control tab, go to vertex mode. And what I want to do is we've got these pieces right in here. Uh, let's work in this right here. So let's go ahead and select, say, these pieces and maybe these pieces. We're going to hit SX and zero and maybe GX snap across to right there. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's take in... Or you know what, let's actually undo that. And instead, what I want to do is we're going to select these. We're going to hit X, delete these vertices. We'll take this, we'll select these, fill that face. And actually, you know what? No, we're going to, we're going to kind of add in a central shaft here. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and fill that face and we'll fill this one here. But then I wanna go ahead and take these, right like this, I'm gonna hit GZ, snap up to right there. 
then I'm going to take these and these and all these back to right about there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit GZ, pull these down until this spacing right in here looks about right. Maybe I'll take these and again to that point, take them down a little bit. Basically, we're creating a kind of a drum shape. Let's select this, hit shift space, change this back over to the dark gray, click assign. That looks good. Uh, let's go in here and take this in along the x-axis to right there, cross the y to right about there. And then I want to, we're basically going to assume that there's going to be a bunch of tubing going out along there. So let's go ahead and take these ones, snap them up, or we'll just move them up to just kind of smooth that out. That looks good. Okay, we'll save that. Uh, let's go in. Looks to me like we've got a big piece going through back in there, so let's go ahead and select this, and we will just extend this mesh. And if we do this, once again, in edge mode, actually, let's go in, let's just select these edges. We're going to hit X, delete the vertices, and we'll do the same thing with... Actually, let's just select this now, and we're going to hit E to extrude, taking it all the way up to about, say, right in here. We'll add in two edge loops. Pull that down, maybe scale down along the z-axis a little bit. Take that down about there. And then we can add in another edge loop. Pull that right up. Select this whole piece. Assign the dark gray. And select everything. W, shade smooth. Add another loop right up to that edge. And let's go ahead and take this piece right in here. Control tab to vertex mode. Select, say, this vertex. Take it across the x-axis. Snap to there. And maybe that one right into there, such that those are the same. Grab these ones as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can see how, you know, all of the detail is starting to come together though. Obviously it's a lot of work, but it's starting to get there. Uh, let's go in, we've got these pieces right in here that we did. Let's take these, let's bring this one right out to there. This one out to about there. And that will kind of separate those together a little bit more. And then let's go ahead. I'm going to select, say, this outer edge on this piece. Or actually, no. Um, let's see. Here we go. Okay, I like this edge a lot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this vertex. I'm going to pull it down to right in here. And basically, I'm going to go ahead and create an inner casing right in here. So I'll just pull these down to about there, this to there, that to there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select, say, this edge. And I'm going to hit E to extrude, snap to there. Let's go and hit uh, Shift-H in object mode just so we can see this so we're not snapping to the vertices on other objects. Rotate that a little bit. Maybe rotate that one as well. Maybe move it down if it's not wanting to snap quite right. Okay. We need to take, say, these in. Cross the x-axis to there. Maybe S 
S, X, and 0. Make sure they're flat. There we go. Take these ones as well. Take them across the X axis. And those. These ones we can maybe bring back out a little bit. Add in a loop right there, such that I can just go ahead and fill this and fill that. Okay, we'll hit Alt, go into op object mode, hit Alt H, reveal everything. There we go. So now that way, when viewed from other angles, we're not going to see just a hole right in here. Although maybe we need to bring that out a little bit more. And we've got these couple pieces right here that we can then bring out, say this too. And then again, select these edges, extrude. Select everything, W remove doubles that we forgot to do. There we go. Remove those. Okay. That's starting to come together. And what we'll actually do is we'll actually merge these together. So let's go and select this piece. And I'm going to take these out to match this curvature. So we'll just pull that out to right about there. And we'll deselect this. Pull that out. Deselect that one. We can maybe hit Control-7 to go into, into top view. Deselect that. And pull that out. And that looks pretty good. Then we need to go ahead and bring this or these up to here. There we go. That looks good. Make sure everything is set to smooth. Control W, save our file. Let's go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanna go ahead and merge these together. So we'll select these two pieces, hit Control J to, oops, let's undo that. Let's make this one our primary selection so that this one inherits the subsurf modifier. Then we can join those, select everything, W and shade smooth. Then we've got this right in here. And what I want to do, let's go and hit Shift H in object mode to hide everything else. Let's go ahead and delete uh, these vertices here. Hit X, delete the vertices. And then I'm going to just make these line up together. So that's in there. Let me rotate this around about like that. We could go ahead and let's just start by adding in, well, I'm going to delete, say, this face, just because I don't know how far this is going to continue back. So I'm first just going to add in, add in these, then I will fill those together. Let's take that loop out a bit more, just edge slide and take it out. Let's add in another one right in here, which then we will fill those. Let's bring this back in along the x-axis to average that out. And we can see that we have mul multiple loops right in here. Oh, that's right, because we had that really sharp angle. And so we need to actually undo that face. Let's add in an additional two loops. And then we'll select these two, fill with those two, select these two, fill with those two. And we can Alt F, select that. And then let's see, we don't need to do that on the other side, but we can select everything, Control N, select that, fill in that face. Let's select this, hit N to bring up the panel. Actually, let's just select, say, these edges, 
see what the crease is, and it's 0.5. So we can go ahead and select, say, all of these. And I'll deselect all those. And I'll hit Shift E. Oops. And actually, I want to hit Control Tab, go into Edge Vertex Select or Edge Mode. We're going to select all this, and then we're going to hit Control Alt Shift and select that loop, which actually deselect what's called an edge ring, which is basically the parallel edges along my selection. So I can deselect those, and now I'll hit uh, Shift E and 0.5 and crease those right up like that. And it looks like we have a slight problem if we hit Alt H. Control tab, go back to vertex mode, and let's see, where is our problem? Well, let's first, we can first select this loop and we'll go ahead and just bring it along the x-axis to right there. We can go ahead and I'm going to delete this face right here because I'm going to assume that these are connected up to this point. Or actually, let's undo this. Let's hit Alt-H in object mode. And we're not going to merge those all together right in there, but we do want to merge them together past this. So let's select this piece and this piece, and then we'll hit Shift H so we can view all these. And so I want to make a basically a seam between these right in here. So the way we'll do this, let's select all of these. Let's take this in out along the y-axis to right. Or actually, let's go and hit three to go to side view. We're then just going to rotate this around until it fits like this. That's pretty darn close. And then I will go ahead and let's take all of these edges. We're going to hit E to extrude, right click, S to scale in, take it up along the Z axis, move it in to fit that angle right about there. Then I'll select these ones. I'm going to pull them in along the X axis. We're going to go all the way until it covers that. Then we'll add in another edge loop right up to there. Sharpen that. And then I want to go ahead, let's add in a loop or a face just like that. So it's basically going to encase that. Let's take these vertices. We'll extrude in to right there. Select every, oops. Snap into there, select everything, W and remove doubles. And then I suppose I could add in another edge loop right up like that. Select this, snap right to there, select everything, W, remove doubles. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's add in another edge loop right up to that edge. I want to go ahead and select these right in here. And these, or actually no, let's go ahead, we'll add in, say, one more edge loop right here. Then we'll select these vertices, we'll extrude right to that vertex, select everything, W, remove doubles, add in another loop right up to approximately that line. Snap to there, select everything, W, remove doubles. Let's add in another loop right up to there, and that will sharpen that up nicely. And that ought to be close enough that you know no one will ever be able to tell. But let's do add in, say, two edge loops right here, and then we'll deselect these, and then we're going to take these up along the Z axis to get a much nicer shape right in there. So that fits really nice. Okay. I like it, but we still have an issue right in here that I'm not sure what's going on. So first off, we have some creasing in on these edges. So let's select these, hit Shift E, negative one. We'll take that to zero. And it looks like we probably just have some creasing on these ones, which we do. So Shift E, negative one to zero. And then this, oh, okay. So these interior, interior edges do not receive any creasing. So Shift E, negative one to zero. And oops, apologies, I knocked over a figure there. And then these ones, shift E, negative one. 
Oh, actually, no, these ones should have creasing, so say 0.5, and then we just need to crease these as well, so shifty 0.5, and this one 2.5. And I believe that then makes that consistent. You know, let's go ahead and just select this edge loop, though. Let's hit X and delete the edge loop, and then we can just add in another one right up to it, and then shift edge slide just a little bit back, and that will make that nice and sharp like so then we've also got this one right in here once again I'm just gonna delete the edge loop and then I'll just add in another one to even that out and then once again say that edge loop shift or just this one edge shifty 0.5 there we go now it looks like everything is creasing evenly This one back here. That does not need a crease. These don't need creases. You can see this is one of those times where creasing really gets to be a bit obnoxious just because you know, you don't necessarily always want them. And then suddenly when you extrude them, they inherit the creases and stuff like that and can just create a bit of a mess for you. Let's save that. Let's hit Alt H to unhide everything. And you can see it's really actually starting to come together and get pretty awesome. Let's save our file though. Uh, and I think we're going to have to follow this, the, the engine up here with yet another section. We're starting to get pretty long on time yet again. So let's do one last thing though, and that is to sharpen these areas up. So I'm gonna add in an edge loop right up to there. I'll add an edge loop. Oops, let's go into vertex mode here. Hit in, and I'm gonna add in an edge loop right across through there. And do another one. Oops. Might have to work with some of my topology right in there. Yes, I will. You can see how that's having some issues. Um, let's see. I'm going to add another one in to right there. I'm going to go ahead and remove this edge as well, since yet again, I don't really know exactly how this is going to work back in here. Um, particularly once all the pipes and such are there, but I think that'll pretty much do it. Oh, let's go ahead and get rid of this hole, though. We can go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's do... Those are going to be coming out right through. Let's go ahead and hit Shift-H. Whoops, Alt-H. Let's select these and these. Hit Shift-H just so we can kind of see roughly how these are going to attach. And that looks pretty good in there. Let's add in, uh, let's add in an, a loop right up like that. And then I'm going to take, say, these edges and this edge. We're going to pull that back to right there. Then we'll select these, pull them back as well. Maybe take these, or we'll rotate that around. Pull these back. Basically, I'm creating a plane for those. I'm going to hit S, X, and Z 0. Scale those out. And then we'll bring this out as well. Make that fit roughly. Looks pretty good. Okay, now something's a, a little funky right in here. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and undo what we just did, just a few steps. Uh, about like that, just to kind of bring it back to where it was. We'll undo that again. Uh, yeah, to right there. And I think that'll be good. Let's go ahead and select, say, these areas. Let's hit W and smooth a few times just to smooth them. Let's also do that one a few more. So we're getting a nice kind of shape right in here. And, you know, we're just going to leave that as it is. 
Although actually we could go ahead and take this. So we have a straight edge right through there. Maybe we'll select this edge loop. We'll hit control E, slide it up. Just make that a little bit sharper. And we could, let's go and hit, uh, select this, hit shift H and hit tab to go to edit mode. And I'm going to go ahead and select this vertex right here. I'm going to hit V, rip that apart, and then I'll select that vertex as well. And we're just going to pull it back like this. Then we're going to add in another edge loop right here. Then I'll select these and I'll snap those down. And that will give me a slightly better shape right in here. So I can now select everything, W, and remove doubles. Then I can add in another edge loop right across through here and select this, snap that up, select everything, W, remove doubles. And so that will just get me a much nicer shape right in here rather than trying to average that out. And you can see, you know, it starts to work a lot nicer. I can go ahead and then add in a loop all the way up through there. Smooth those up. Maybe I'll add another one right in there. And we'll definitely have some some work to do on these ones. Let's select that loop, actually. Let's then deselect all of those. Let's hit Control e Edge Slide. Just bring that out a little bit. We'll hit Alt-H to unhide everything. And... Let's go ahead and just real quick, since we can do this, let's just make these fit right in here. So I'm going to hit Control tab go to vertex mode, and let's grab these pieces. We're going to pull them down to right. Oops, had some extras. Pull them down to right in here. Maybe rotate this around about like that. And let's average out these faces. Or actually, you know what? We can delete these vertices in here. They're not even being used. Hit X, delete the vertices. We'll fix that hole later. And then let's take these three, pull them down, fit in right here, maybe S, Z, and zero. Take this edge, pull it back, and let's select all three of these. And this one needs to say come out to there. This one into about right there, maybe S, X, and zero. Straighten that out. Same thing right there and right there. That then looks pretty good. We can then add another edge loop right up to that. And then maybe we'll select this piece. Let's select this inside loop, SX and zero. Oops. <laughs> Undo that. Select this. And we'll select, say, these ones. And maybe these ones. Pull them in along the x-axis a little bit there. Add in another loop right up like that and then maybe we'll add in another one to there we can maybe go ahead and take this up just approximately to right there where we know that it'll be just about maybe we'll pull this back a little bit so that we've got a flatter surface right here so a better plane to it and then let's go ahead and just say take this edge um, let's actually try just selecting these fill in a face right there actually that gets a really nice smooth cast look right there so that looks really good looks like this 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 and this fill that face and that will be enough to hide that. We can maybe take this up along the z-axis a little bit. Once again, get a smoother arc through there. And that looks pretty good. Maybe we can move these a little bit just to line up better with the, the tip of this piece. Okay, we're going to go ahead and call that quits for this piece. Uh, we'll start in again on part C of this section, uh, still detailing the mid-engine. You know, we've got all the detail in here, so there's still a ways to go, but we're making good progress, and it's definitely coming together.